Well, I think we all could have seen this one coming. If you haven't noticed, I make a lot of necks around here. I think that has something to do with the CNC being an excellent tool for carving necks. After all, what do we want in a neck? Consistency and accuracy come to mind. Eventually, we're gonna to have to talk about the manufacturing maestro himself, Leo Fender. The Fender style necks seem relatively simple as they were designed to be manufactured easily. Well, I don't think it's all that easy to make any style neck, so let's just go with easier. At first glance, they seem pretty straightforward, but when we get into it a bit, they're not quite as simple. Clarence Leonatus Fender. From this point on, we'll just call him Leo. For one, because I don't want to pronounce that again. And B, it's shorter. Leo was born on August 10th, 1909 in Fullerton, California. As a youth, he was attracted to tinkering with electronics and was fascinated by his uncle's automotive electronics shop. In 1938, he started his own radio repair shop. Musicians started coming to him for public address systems and later for amplifiers for acoustic guitars and the new lap steel, or Hawaiian guitars, that were becoming more and more popular in country music. Some of the first instruments made by Leo were these Hawaiian, or lap steel guitars, with the K&F Manufacturing Corporation. This was a collaboration with Clayton Orr Kaufman, known as Doc, who had previously been working with Rickenbacker. When Doc left in 1946, the company was renamed to the Fender Electronic Instrument Company in 1947. He invited George Fullerton to join him in 1948, and together they worked practically to revolutionize the industry. As with most innovative designs, Fender was able to capitalize on a change in musical styles. As the popularity of big dance bands waned, there was a need for loud, more durable, and easy to play instruments that would stay in tune and not feedback at high volumes. Boogie Woogie, Rhythm and Blues, Western Swing, and Honky Tonk bands would embrace these electric instruments. In 1950, the Fender Esquire was released and subsequently renamed to the Broadcaster and then the Telecaster the next year in a two pickup model. This model has been in continuous production from 1950 until today. The Tele neck was designed to be easy to manufacture and allow for assembly line style instrument construction. This was a big change in the way instruments were made in those days. These simple slab cut necks were made in mass and didn't require fitting and gluing into a custom fit body. These so-called bolt-on necks, it's a screw-on neck, there's no bolts involved, made the production of these instruments a lot more straightforward. It seems to me that the neck was still a difficult part to make, and while the bodies and neck profiles could be easily cut out on a pin router, the back of the neck still had to be carved, and I imagine that like many instruments in that period, the production tolerances varied quite a bit. Even if the same person carved 100 necks, there would be considerable differences from instrument to instrument. A very small fraction of an inch changed the feel of a neck considerably, and in the 50s, a thicker, heavier neck was relatively normal. Fender seemed to 
to systematically bring these dimensions down to a size that still feels great today and makes the Teleneck widely known as easy and fun to play. In the 70s, due to illness, Leo sold the company to CBS. After returning to good health, Leo spent some time as a consultant at CBS, and later went on to work with a new company named Trisonic. And that name just didn't sit well with Leo. The company was later changed to Music Man. In 1979, he moved on and founded another new company, GNL Music Productions, again with George Fullerton. At GNL, he concentrated on enhancing the tremolo and electronic systems of the Strat and Tele style instruments. It's clear Leo just liked to tinker with electronics. He also liked to work with production equipment and help develop production techniques. It seems to me that he left the main business of running a production facility to George, while he concentrated on new product development. I share Leo's affinity to tinkering and developing production processes. And while I still build one at a time, I often think about how I would produce the same parts on a scale like the early Fender production shops. It's an interesting problem with varied solutions. It's fun to put yourself in these situations. While well, most of us would not have been able to come up with such elegant solutions that have so far passed the test of time, we can still learn from a master and try to add our own flavor to the mix. The classic Tele tone remains extremely popular today, and I'm sure it will remain so for a very long time. Mm -hmm.